Welcome back to Tech Raptors Quick Thoughts, a video series where we have a roundtable discussion about a particular game. Uh, in this video, we will be talking about Anthem. Uh, I'm Rutledge. I'll be joined by a couple staff writers. Uh, if you guys want to introduce yourselves. Hey guys, I'm Austin. This is Rob Grosso. And I'm Chevy. We've all played a little bit this weekend, so uh, let's just kind of talk about how we feel about the game. Obviously, this has been one that people are on the fence about for the most part. So so what are you guys' thoughts? I was very much on the fence as well. And it's good to actually play it because I've been cucking at it, kind of keeping away um, because I'm, I am I love Bioware games. Uh, so, but I didn't want to spoil too much. And um, I pre-ordered it pretty recently so I could jump in. So far, <clears throat> it's been a pretty good experience. Um, I think in terms of gameplay, it feels to me a lot like Mass Effect Andromeda, which might not be uh the best thing to say but I, I always enjoyed the combat in andromeda um flying feels absolutely incredible like if they made an iron man game with the same controls then it would be perfect i know robert you played on console right did did you play on pc austin no i played on the xbox and okay that's definitely something that i would like to talk about the performance <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Everybody's laughing a little bit. Yeah. Uh, this was not a smooth uh, demo in a lot of ways. Yeah, no. I know that I know that Chevy and I had some issues today where we would have to force close on PC um to be able to relaunch the client to be able to even get into some missions at times. Um mm -hmm. so definitely some technical glitches. Yeah, I would have to X out the entire game because I'd be stuck on that forever loading screen to get in. So that wasn't very fun. Okay, so that wasn't just tied to PC. That was PC and Xbox then. That also happened for me a few times as well. So the baseline was definitely some glitches, but overall, what did you guys think about combat and uh, some of the story elements that were part of the demo? I'm, I'm not like a huge fan of the these type of um, looter shooter type games, but you know, this as far as combat goes, it felt nice. I, I know Austin said he's playing on, on the consoles. On the PC, the flying is awful it does not give you direct control like it does when you, i plugged in a controller it definitely feels a lot better on a controller than on a mouse but once you kind of get used to it you can you can start to to fly yourself around the battlefield pretty reliably but other than that you know once i got over that initial hurdle it was pretty fun I, I still don't see myself picking this one up and playing it but if you're into that kind of game i think it's definitely you know some of the best out there right now i kind of likened it to destiny so i played a lot of destiny one a little bit of destiny two um in the but the difference for me is that the combat is more fun because there's more at your fingertips so destiny just felt like run and shoot you had a couple weapons at your fingertip whereas uh, in this case, you have more abilities, you have a lot more mobility, and I feel like that just made the battles a lot more versatile. So it wasn't just like run up to an enemy and just shoot at them for 10 to 20 seconds and wait till they die. What surprised me was also the fluidity of the uh, the control schemes. Like once you actually get the hang of uh, flying and hovering and dashing and evading and all that fun stuff that you can do with it, um, you could really like string together like some quick moves, combos, um, use your guns or your special grenades or abilities or things like that to really sort of like run rampant against like horde well not hordes of enemies but like a larger group of enemies and this like doubles and triples the amount when you actually go in there with co-op in mind as well too if you have really good players who know what they're doing it could be like a just like a mashup of just like insanity for them to uh, run rampant on uh, folks and boss battles and all that yeah and there is actually a the environment does a really good job of like complementing that that versatile at your fingertips stuff so you know you've got guys that spawn up on cliffs that'll snipe down on you and you know you got turrets everywhere and being able to scale through the battlefield in a really like quick and fluid way is, was pretty fun there's also a decent amount of uh diverse enemy types as well not just like the um i think that the, the scars and the other the dominion groups as well but i'm talking like the monsters you had like all those scorpions, those flying like wyvern things, the giant spider creature, whatever, big boss who fought that thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. The tyrant, yeah. yeah. You know, so they got like a decent, and also like these weird crab looking things too. Uh, I don't know what they were, but like you got like a decent like alien ecology going on here too. So they, they put in a lot decent variety at least. 
uh, for yeah. you to take down. And you need to use some sort of tactics to really uh, be good at the combat, or at the very least be good at uh, surviving the combat. I can tell you for my own experience... You know, even on normal difficulty, uh, some of these fights were very difficult to get through, even with four people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the stronghold was difficult. I know that 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 first section, while we were kind of figuring out, we got our butts handed to us a couple times. Yeah, quite a few. Yeah, <laughs> I, I found it hard to like actually be good at this game. This is kind of going back to the technical issues on the Xbox One. It usually ran below 30 FPS consistently, uh, especially in the open areas. So. It was almost really difficult to kind of tell what's going on at times, and other times it, it worked a bit better. I know I turned off, like, chromatic aberration and motion blur and stuff. Um, I know that Bioware's working on it. I made I made the guy aware on Reddit about it, but it sounds like, I mean, as much as I enjoyed the combat, I wasn't able to pull off as many combos because the feedback was really delayed because of the FPS. Yeah, I noticed some stuttering on PC as well. Um, even in the fort, um, I had a little bit of stuttering looking around and I mean, I'm running a 1070, so it's not a, I don't think it's a resource issue so much as, um, just some tech minor technical stuff that needs to be addressed before launch. Yeah. And it's an old build of the game, like eight weeks old or something. So, um, I saw somebody say optimization is very much a kind of pre launch thing. Um, yep. so I, I kind of, I, I have hope that it'll be better when I actually probably get it on launch. What did you guys think about the customization on the javelins? Like all the different options that you could enable in terms of like weaponry and special abilities and some of the like boosts for armor and things like that. I spent like 30 minutes doing it just for two javelins because I'm insane. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like I, like the first one, the uh, the ranger that we started with, I just went with like a red and white paint scheme. I bought the uh, skull vinyl on it to go with like its face and whatnot and then i just gave it like an old look so it looked like it was like seeing hell over wars over years and stuff like the paint was peeling off it was rusted in some areas it was really gnarly <laughs> and it just it and i don't know that just spoke to me then when i unlocked my second one which was the storm uh javelin i went for like this sleek sort of bronze and black uh look with it which would look like brand new with like these high fine leather all over the place with like bronze uh, straps and things all over it. It looked pretty damn awesome. Like that stuff is, I mean, that stuff like is all the extra bells and whistles that people are really going to sink their teeth into and probably enjoy. Um, chances are that's going to be the one that's, uh, that's the area where you're going to see a lot of the sort of like uh, promised microtransactions in and with it. Mm -hmm. But as long as they're relegated just to that and that we could still tinker and play around with it and they give us enough options to start with or to unlock, I think we'll be okay. Yeah, I, I messed with it just a little bit in there. And, you know, like you saying, it, it kind of gives you that, that feeling like from the scene in Iron Man 1 where he's messing with all the color schemes of, of the Mark 1 and such. And, you know, you can make your guy look distinct from the other while still having that overall shape of whatever javelin you chose which is kind of nice there's there's still enough clarity on the battlefield that you can look over at somebody with whatever customization they have and still know that that's them but they're still unique yeah and there's a lot of weapon variety um i, I was surprised with the titan i could spit acid at people and i thought that was pretty <laughs> cool um so i'm just running around spitting acid at people and, and chucking bombs and stuff and that that's what's kind of fun for me is is having these different abilities that you can choose from rather than being relegated to this is what you're stuck with um it's more of a here's a whole bunch of options play how you want yeah i guess i was under the impression that you know certain certain javelins could use only certain like primary weapon weapons but you know i played the storm which is like a glass cannon but you can use a shotgun or a light machine gun pretty much any thing you want on them same case with all the others which i thought was really yeah, I played a Titan with a sniper rifle, like an absolute madman. So, <laughs> I mean, there's just, there's a lot to this game. Um, obviously, we didn't see a whole lot. We saw, what, th three missions, maybe? Um, a little bit of free roam and a single stronghold, um, plus a little bit of the story. So, we've only seen a peak of what's, uh, you know, the full depth of this game. Just a bit of a slither, uh, a sliver of it. Um, thoughts on Tarsus? What do you guys think about that? Because it was kind of a different feel compared to the uh, action. I found it to be pretty uh, la uh, relaxing, I guess would be the way to put it. Although it was also lacking a little bit. Maybe because it's just a bit of the demo and not everything was in there. 
the the fort you're talking about, right? The like, yeah, the yeah, central yeah. Hub. like the first person uh, section. It's it's neat, but uh, I want to be able to move faster. Well, they did say that it, running was disabled for the demo. Ah, <sighs> that's okay. weird. <laughs> yeah, that's a bit. That's an odd choice because I think that's my main complaint with it. It's like I understand why it's there. I I think at least on the PC, the the overall UI is, is kind of crap. But I don't imagine them changing that at this point. And I think that most of the stuff that's accomplished there in the in the Ford area could just be accomplished by a menu. Um, but it feels like they want to kind of immerse you in this world by even like spending the time to animate you putting you into the suit and stuff like that. And I Iron like Man the, style. Yeah, I, I like the idea of it. But for this kind of game, like I want the ability to disable that because I'm going to be seeing that animation a hundred couple thousand times you know like every mission you go on every time you go on it you're gonna have to do this loop and that can get you know, annoying i mean I, I did start skipping the uh animation of suiting up for what it's worth mm -hmm. um the <laughs> the fort itself um i like the idea of it i kind of see what they're trying to do uh there's not a lot of plot per se although that might be just by design because of the demo but it does seem like they're really trying to push for the players to sort of like get lived in in the uh, sort of the world they're trying to build and like create their own narrative, even though it's like a very binary choice system. And the characters that you could interact with, you know, they don't really have much to do other than you talking to them every once in a while. Mm -hmm. But also that's kind of what Bioware does with NPCs anyway, so that's kind of par for the course i guess for their uh style of play yeah there's there's that limited limited availability of of interaction um but it, i mean at least they they give you more than what destiny gave you um in terms of interaction with other characters mm. so there's a little bit more immersion and and my guess is that there will be less you have to search for the lore and there will be more here's the lore you, um do you get the impression that they might actually um tweak all that too before the game launches or like after it launches i don't know i mean i guess we'll probably find out that i'm not sure <laughs> you know there's there's a lot there's a lot of options that they could that they probably had disabled for the demo i mean if they had running disabled it's possible that they had conversation op options very very limited as well I, I did notice there were a few people that you could like click on and then it would just say uh, not part of the demo. Like they gave you like a generic message. Same thing with like finding um, stuff for their codex as well. I think there was a lot that was removed. But overall, if you were to make a decision today, what would you say you think you would do um, game wise? Do you think you would pick this up? I think I'll be picking it up, but I, I just really hope that those technical issues are fixed. Otherwise, it's not going to be as enjoyable. But for what it's worth, uh, with the time I had, I still enjoyed it. So I'd probably get it. I'm not the biggest Destiny fan. I'm not, I was never really the biggest fan of those style games. Like Destiny bored me. Destiny 2 bored me. Uh, Division, I was never a big fan of. The only one I really could tolerate that sort of like shooter, looter porn thing was like Borderlands. And even then, that's kind of like a like an okay treat sometimes. I was more interested in how these controls worked and how tight everything was than all those games so far. So at least on that level, I think I can have fun with Anthem. I would say give it a shot. You know, they got the public uh, demo coming. So I'm kind of in like the middle as well. Like, I'd say give it a shot at least because it, it's working for me. I want to see what else they can do with it. Yeah, for me, it's a... It's a no. I mean, I, I'm just not a fan of these kind of games, but if you're a fan of, you know, the Destinies, the Divisions, you're probably going to love this game. It, you know, it gives you more of that with a lot more freedom of movement, which is probably a, a huge sell for a lot of people who play those games. So it's a, a no for me, but it's also not my kind of game that happens. For me, I'm, I'm still on the fence. Um, I, I like, but I also don't like these kinds of games. Um, I really enjoyed Destiny when I first started playing it. Um, but then it quickly ran out of content for me um, that was enjoyable. So it's a matter of whether or not Anthem can maintain good content and not become repetitive and, and just bullet spongy. Time will tell. But for me, it's, it's definitely on the fence. So that's it for our Anthem quick thoughts. The game is out on February 22nd of 2019 on PlayStation 4, PC, and Xbox One.